Calaroga Shark Media. Hi, I'm Chenny Mack with your daily comedy news. We have a date for Ricky Gervais Armageddon on Netflix. That date is Christmas. Ricky Gervais said for the next 2,000 years, people will remember the 25th of December as the day Armageddon was released on Netflix. Armageddon recorded at the London Palladium earlier this year. Features Ricky Gervais talking about the end of humanity, political correctness, family weddings, funerals, and artificial intelligence. The show won Ricky a Guinness World Record for the highest gross for a single stand-up performance ever, 1.41 million pounds. Wow. And that was just one of 85 arena dates he did on the tour. Back in 2020, Ricky signed a reported $40 million deal with Netflix, which included the third season of Afterlife, plus an unspecified number of stand-up specials. So that'll be a good one to watch Christmas night. I don't know if there's a football game that night. I could look. Let's look. Oh, there are three games on Christmas Day. The Raiders and the Chiefs. That's not bad. Giants and the Eagles. Uh, Giants a little rough, but the Eagles are a good team. And the night game, the Ravens and the 49ers. And I'm a 49ers fan. I won't be getting to Ricky Gervais on the 25th, maybe on the 26th. Bill Burr commented on, uh, was it last week or the week before? Remember, Mrs. Burr showed up at the UFC and Donald Trump was there and she gave Trump or perhaps Kid Rock or perhaps Dana White a two-finger salute. Bill Burr said, I love my wife. You know where you stand with her. The guy walked in the arena. Everybody cheered. She gave the finger. Nobody got arrested. That's why this country's great. Everybody expressed themselves. Can we all be adults? I don't know about you, but I came there to go to the fights. I didn't know I was going to the Republican National Convention. It's like those Trump guys. They're always going, you snowflakes, F your feelings and all that. And then you make fun of Trump and they're like, oh, my God, they're so disrespectful. Send your letters to Bill Burr. Johnny Mac, you never mentioned Matt Reif. Believe me, I was trying not to mention Matt Reif, and then I saw this headline. Matt Reif accused of swiping jokes from Ralphie May. I was uh, friendly. I almost said tight. I wasn't tight with Ralphie May, but I was quite friendly with Ralphie May. Quite. So I was like, what? Twitter user at really, though, posted two stolen Ralphie May bits from the Matt Reif Netflix special so far, and I'm halfway in. This is nearly a direct lift. At least to use a different cadence for plausible deniability. Embarrassing. Atch really, though, posted the clips back to back. They're a little too long for me to share. In the first clip, Ralphie is talking about a student he went to school with. He's using the R word that has fallen quite out of fashion. As Cracked put it, Ralphie riffs on the special needs kid from the high school who also happens to be extremely well endowed. Then the Matt Reif clip, same thing. Crack says, if I give Rife the benefit of the doubt here, I'd say he and Ralphie simply shared a remarkable coincidence in their lives. Both comics went to a high school with a likable special needs kid who also happened to have a uh, large endowment. Could happen, I guess. But in both bits, the comedians reference the other student wearing a helmet. In both bits, the comedians observe that when God taketh away in one area, he giveth in another. And Crack says, it's not the first time someone has accused Rife of borrowing a joke or two. Oh, I did not know this. Let's do some more Googling. What came up is a TikTok titled Matt Reif Steals Our Joke from the Barcode Network Podcast. I went to play on it, uh, and it's a TikTok, and I'm not logged in, and I don't feel like letting the Chinese have all my information on this particular computer. So let's just move on. Today, one of the great days of the year. Why, Johnny Mac? Because it's a day where we get a new Adam Sandler film, Leo, out on Netflix today. Cancel all your plans. Stay home. In Leo, Adam Sandler voices a 70-year-old lizard named Leo, who for decades has served as a class pet for a rotating group of fifth graders. One day, Leo learns he only has a year to live and plans to escape to freedom. But instead, twist, spoiler, he has to rescue the students from their mean substitute teacher. Listen to this, uh, whew, listen to this. Can you hear it? Can you hear me losing it? Can you, you hear me, right? Sandler tells The Hollywood Reporter, he was inspired to do a version of, are you ready? Grease for the last year of elementary school. Tap the brakes, Adam Sandler. Let's not go comparing this to Grease. Sandler stars in the voice cast alongside, coincidentally, best choices for the voice acting, his daughters Sonny and Sadie, no one better. Wife Jackie, also one of the best voice actors in the business, is also in the film. But Sandler says, don't expect family projects from now on. They want to do their own thing, too. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. I'm sure they'll get a project, and I'm sure if we look at the credits, it'll say executive produced by Adam Sandler. This will be one of those deals where Netflix is like, hey, we throw us a special and yeah, you can have two projects that we don't care about. Happens all the time in showbiz. That will happen. Write it down. Johnny Mac, November 21st, 2023. Write it down.
When it came to crafting the voice of Leo, Adam Sandler revealed that he channeled late manager and producer Bernie Brillstein, who helped launch SNL and served as manager to some SNL stars, including Adam Sandler, Dan Aykroyd, Gilda Radner, John Belushi, Martin Short, and Lorne Michaels. Robert Smigel is part of this project. He himself also used to do an impression of Bernie Brillstein and remembered how he would give advice in a way that would suit the film's wise lizard. Smigel recalled, Adam said, let me do Bernie for this one. I thought he might do Peter Falk, but he said, I want to do Bernie for this one. Sandler already had started to work on a movie set during the fifth grade. Sandler says it was a very different movie, and it had a narrator who appeared two or three times, and the last time it appeared, it was revealed at the very end of the movie that he was a snake at the back of the classroom. That sort of triggered this whole idea for me. Like, what if the class pet's been stuck in this room for 70 years, seen every kind of fifth grader, was incredibly jaded, then finds out he has a year to live, and then he decides he's got to go make more of his life. Then he ends up giving advice to kids. Sounds great, Adam. By the way, I was curious, and I googled lizard lifespan. Google tells me the lifespan of a lizard depends on the species of lizards. Take a guess. Well, according to Google, geckos survive for about 10 to 15 years in a typical home. Chameleons, 5 to 7 years. Iguanas, 20 years. And Komodo dragons, the biggest of the reptiles, live for an average of 40 years. So there could be some creative stretching here in Leo, but that's okay. Adam Sandler says, Kids have such heightened anxiety about the smallest problems sometimes when they're that age, and I thought it was a really funny thing to put together. Kids with really tiny problems that are huge in their minds confided with a wise old lizard who has the lifespan of three to four times the normal lizard lifespan. Bill Burr is in this thing as well. He plays Squirtle, who's a turtle, who shares the classroom terrarium with Leo. Burr said, It was surreal to be in the booth with Sandler. He's the greatest guy ever. Bill Burr goes song-free, joking, I'm actually disappointed they didn't ask me. I'm one of the great bad singers of all time. Robert Smigel's sons, also coincidentally in the movie, they also are among some of the best voice actors in the business. Leo, streaming on Netflix today. Hooray. Also out on Netflix today, The Old Man in the Pool, Mike Birbiglia. The show is a take on life's big questions. Why are we here? What's next? Exactly how much chlorine are they putting in the YMCA pool? The Old Man on the Pool, Netflix today. Good SNL this weekend. I saw Vulture didn't like it at all. I thought it was uh, probably the second best episode of the season because of the weirdness of Sarah Sherman and the greatness of Bo and Yang. They were both in a lot of sketches, and their sketches tend to stand out. Uh, Sarah brought the weird on Saturday night, which was good. Now, I was going to mention her anyway, and then I saw Variety happen to profile her. Good for me because it's a slow news week. We learn from Variety that Sarah has been working with colleagues for months on new technology that would make the act of pretending to throw up on stage a lot easier and more comfortable. You see, for years, SNL cast members have relied on a tube tucked alongside their arm and usually inside a jacket sleeve that spews out liquid approximating vomit or blood. At just the right moment, the actor holds an arm close to their mouth and the vomit rig does the rest. Dan Aykroyd used this in 1978 when playing Julia Child. Sarah Sherman's idea is an advanced vomit rig that's hands-free, kind of like Bluetooth style. She and Mikey Day wrote a sketch that would have used it, but it was cut after dress rehearsal. Sarah says, just know that we have some of the most brilliant minds and special effects working around the clock to develop live gags. I'm trying every day to make great things. Talk more about Sarah later in the week. It's a pretty good profile. As the show wrapped up, you know, at the end there where they all stand on the stage and the music plays out, Colin Jost was seen holding up a sign that read, We love you, Dana and Paula. A shout out to the couple whose son, Dex Carvey, died last week from an accidental drug overdose at 32. Dana posted on Instagram and Twitter over the weekend saying, this is just to say thank you. He said he and wife Paula have been overwhelmed by the love, compassion, and personal stories that people have shared with them. We received so many beautiful messages from people who knew Dex. These touched us more than we could ever express in words. Dana added, I'll be taking a break from work and social media, trying to figure out what life looks like now that we're a family of three. We'll heal the best we can and carry on. Our darling Dex would have wanted it that way. Some more details around the original announcement last Thursday. Carvey had posted twice about his son alongside a photo of Dex. He wrote, F the tabloids, this is my boy. He also shared a snapshot of father and son teaming up on a project saying, Dex and me working together, what a joy. Jim Gaffigan tagged it and said, what a great picture. Love the focus you're putting on telling us about Dex. Such a lovely tribute to your boy. Kevin Nealon commented, love the picture, Dana. It tells so much. God bless you, Dex. That's your comedy news for today.